Hey name tags and welcome back, this is Ash from Heal My PC. So AMD Dual Graphics aka the never ending saga. I owe you guys this update for a long time, I apologize for the lateness, it couldn't be helped as you may or may not know I've been caring for someone full time who had major surgery and with possible ongoing complications and I'm still not free. In my defense, I did upload a rough, unscripted over 23 minute video immediately on the same day, 22nd August 2016 but as a private video just in case I wasn't able to follow it through or in case the story would be brushed under the carpet dismissively. Here is a taster of that vid. This topic is going to be about the ongoing problem with AMD Dual Graphics setup, especially with the Crimson Edition driver. This video is going to be quite uh, messy. I've not scripted this, so I've just received some information and I wanted to share this with you guys. Still, this is a difficult video for me, not the usual repair or tutorial vid, but rather an investigative piece and I'm not a journalist, not even close. So please bear with me. If you are new here, you can check out my previous three videos on this topic of AMD Dual Graphics or links below. Regardless, I'll bring you up to speed. Since the release of the new Radeon software Crimson Edition driver from AMD, many of you have been having problems enabling dual graphics on that new driver. Prior to this, I had done a few videos both on Windows 7 and Windows 10 showing how to enable it on the previous AMD Catalyst Control Center driver. Since I only had with me a humble A86500 APU, Paired with an ASUS HD6670 1GB DDR5 GPU, I was not able to fully test other configurations like the famous A107850K with its recommended pairing of R7250 GPU on the newest driver. So following my tutorials and the many requests from you guys who are still unable to activate dual graphics, I contacted AMD by email and phone and spent over 5 hours talking to and emailing them. Unfortunately, despite my various efforts to procure other hardware to test like requesting from AMD themselves, retailers, you guys and in my own private social network, I was not successful and I was neither willing nor able to afford the cost of the hardware only to test the dual graphics function in the newer driver. Disclaimer: From this point onwards, I may be including evidence of recordings of that conversation, whether audio or written, with prior permission from the parties involved. Here is the initial email I wrote on the 18th August 2016 with some grammatical mistakes, so go easy on the comments, okay? And the same email is in document format here. And here is the email response I received on the 22nd of August 2016. So I wrote, to whom it may concern, I did a couple of video tutorials on setting up AMD Dual Graphics with the previous Catalyst Control Center bracket CCC. Since then, the new Crimson Edition driver has been released and a lot of my viewers are saying they are unable to activate Dual Graphics with a new driver. Some forums are mentioning that AMD is no longer supporting dual graphics with the new Crimson Edition driver. Many have reported they tried to roll back to the CCC but it didn't work. I now need to do a third tutorial within Windows 10 to help viewers find a solution to activate or reactivate dual graphics. Question 1. If it's true, why is it dual graphics supported anymore in the latest driver? A few days later on the 22nd August 2016, I received an email from them. Dear customer, service request, yada yada yada, okay, thank you for your email. Based on your response, I see that you are having query regarding dual graphic setup on Windows 10 OS. Question 1, and they're trying to answer my question. If it's true, why isn't dual graphics supported anymore in the latest driver? Answer, no. I have latest driver do support dual graphic technology with specific graphic card which has 384 shader only, not with 512 shader memory. I'm reading verbatim here guys. Please find the below link for more information regarding AMD dual graphic card technology. And there's a couple of forums and uh, they do mention uh, in the forums a discussion about the two different types of R7250, i.e. 512 shaders and not 384 shader unit. Very confusing. So the email from AMD answered the questions I asked, but the first answer had me concerned. Turns out there are two versions of the same card with different shader units, i.e. 384 and 512 shader unit. We are not talking here about the R7250X and R7250 without the X, or even different brands of R7250 like MSI, Sapphire, Gigabyte, etc. We are talking here 
about the different R7250 chipset. The 384 shader version is based on the OLED architecture, whereas the 512 shader memory version is based on the newer Cape Verde architecture, the latter being arguably the faster card with an exclusive GDDR5 memory compared to the former with possible GDDR3 memory. Here is an article from Hardware Lux for a comparison. So naturally I wanted to know whether this information was clearly disclosed on AMD's website and then I stumbled on a second problem and that had me fuming in rage. On AMD's page I saw one new word addition which changed the whole perspective for me. On this link under the desktop tab in the last column labeled recommended graphics card pairings star brand, this single word brand was not there before my email to AMD as far as I know. Since the 15th of May 2016, I have been regularly checking this website and that word, brand, was not there. My email to them was on the 18th of August 2016, they responded on the 22nd August and suddenly after the email, I see this new word, brand, added. So two questions, one, what's my evidence and two, why does it matter? First question, on the 15th of May 2016, I uploaded a video titled AMD Dual Graphics dash five things you need before setup. And at about 55 seconds mark, here is a playback. If your eyes are not deceiving you, here you can find the last column heading clearly labeled recommended graphics card pair rings without the word brand. So that's one of my evidence, I have more. Now for the second question, why does it matter? It may matter because this single word addition can potentially shift the responsibility and accountability of clear disclosure away from AMD and onto brand or board manufacturers like Asus, Gigabyte and MSI or even retailers. So I dug further and eventually had someone from AMD named Sean, a customer service manager, contact me. We spoke for over one and a half hour on the phone, nice guy. For starters, Sean confirmed that indeed Dual Graphics is still supported in Radeon Software Crimson Edition, essentially answering all my five questions from the original email. Here is an image he sent me to show that the Dual Graphics concept is available, except it's no longer called Dual Graphics. This is the only image I have and it's not very clear. I have asked Sean for a better quality image, but nothing as time of writing yet. I also have scoured the internet for a better one but to no avail, so if anyone of you does indeed have a better shot, please send it to me. Like I said, I don't have this hardware to test. So Sean assures me that this is dual graphics technology. You can see under the global graphics tab, bracket AMD Radeon R7 graphics plus R7 200 graphics and also AMD Crossfire logo and AMD Crossfire is enabled, indicated by a white toggle dot. However, we spent a lot of time discussing the whole dual graphics concept, including the word brand. So we went through a process of buying parts whereby I put myself in the shoes of a potential buyer of a dual graphics technology, for example, the A10 7850K and the R7250. And here are the conclusions of that exercise. Number one, Sean does agree that there is a lack of clarity from AMD as to the whole step-by-step -step process for dual graphics. Besides, that was the whole reason I uploaded the first video tutorial on dual graphics almost two years ago now, to avoid others the headache I went through. Number two, as far as the R7250 is concerned, neither AMD nor UK PC part picker nor the board manufacturers nor the various online retailers indicated anything about compatibility or incompatibility of dual graphics technology with the A10 APU. Here, I believe that it should have been AMD responsibility and accountability and not the rest of the above mentioned parties. Sean was not able to answer as to who, why and when that word brand was added. Sean, if you're watching this, myself and possibly now my viewers are still waiting for an answer. We agreed to disagree on this one. I still feel that if that word was added after my email to them, then it was done intentionally to pass the blame or in good faith to further warn buyers to research more. Number three, according to Sean, for builds like this one, it is the customer's responsibility to do full research and inquiry and to eventually contact the manufacturer of the GPU card one is trying to buy or even to contact AMD to ask about dual graphics compatibility for that specific card and not to make any purchase based on guesswork. 
While I partly agree with him that yes, we do need to do proper research, I reiterated the fact that even myself, an above average PC builder and a computer repair tech savvy person, up until a few days ago, would not have known to dig that deep to verify the dual graphics compatibility of the R7 250, since I would have had no clear reasons to believe that there were two versions of that card, and would probably have bought the first R7 250 based on availability, color, price, etc. Number four. According to Sean, the R7 250 with 512 shader memory is a much faster card anyway, thus rendering dual graphics unnecessary. Unfortunately, I cannot quantify that, not having the hardware to test whether the difference in price, if any, justifies the higher FPS ratio, if any, again. Number five, it's possible that many of you do indeed have the dual graphics technology set up, but without the actual branding dual graphics wordings in the newer driver. So check again. So my thoughts on the whole process. As for the hardcore Intel fanboys who may be watching this, I don't want this to turn into a witch hunt against AMD. Personally, I am not a hardcore AMD fanboy neither. I do currently have three AMD systems and only one Intel, solely due to their components price currently fitting my affordability. My next build is probably going to be Intel and Nvidia based, irrespective of the outcome of this issue. Remember guys, every company can mess up, and AMD, if you have messed up, then you can come clean and make amends somehow. As for my thoughts on dual graphics, it's not a good value for money investment. It's best to get a separate CPU and GPU if you are considering building a gaming PC. But what if you have already bought the wrong card and are not able to obtain dual graphics? In that case, I would advise one of the following. Scenario A. Sell both the APU and GPU off and buy better components like the current Athlon X4 880K and a proper decent GPU, even a used one from reputable seller with fair return policy. Scenario B. Sell off the GPU only and repurpose the APU for a secondary system which does not require demanding graphics ability like a home server or home theater PC. Then of course buy better gaming components and build yourself a nice gaming PC. And scenario C. Wait out to see any potential outcome from this video. Maybe we might be able to persuade AMD to do something about it. And that leads me to the conclusion. Guys, I actually need your input on this. Do you feel that AMD has messed up here? If yes, what do you think they should do and or what do you think we should do? Or do you think that I and possibly others are reading too much into this, bordering on paranoia and that we should stop mourning and just get on with it? Either way, do get in touch with myself in the comment section below or on my various contacts detail if you have any thoughts or plan of action. If you are new here, consider subscribing to the channel, leave a comment, like, dislike and share this vid with others. As always, it was a pleasure talking to you. This was Ash from Heal My PC. Until next time, peace out.